Welcome to the Smoky Hill River Festival Preview Show. I'm David Hawksworth, your host, and I'm here with Brad Anderson, the Executive Director of Arts and Humanities. Yeah. Hi, Dave. Nice to see you. It's great being here. June 8th through 11th is, are the days that, that we want to reserve in the calendar this year. They are. 4 p.m. on uh, Thursday the 8th, uh, things will get a lot noisier than they are today. Right, so, right. Yeah. Yeah, we're here in front of the Stein stage uh, where all the musical acts will be playing uh, Thursday or Friday through Sunday. Thursday will be the festival jam, and we'll talk about more about that later. Uh, but this is festival number 47. 47 if I, years, if I yeah. Got it correctly. Yeah. So uh, we've both been involved in many, many river festivals over the decades. Yeah. Why is the 47th one going to be the best ever? I think for a lot of reasons. Uh, you know, the first one that comes to mind, and it's not the most important, but but I think this is really going to be our first post COVID year where we're not talking about that as much mm -hmm. or anxious about it. We're seeing a lot of energy from the community of wanting to volunteer, wanting to take part, uh, excited about what's going to be happening. And, and so so just for that, uh, just to be able to have the, the celebration of community that this event has come to describe, I, I think this will be a, a really good year for that. Great. Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to it. And, and yeah. I know we, we have family coming in and everything. So uh, it's just going to be a great time, those three, three or four days. Well, and as you're going to hear from uh, some of our staff, uh, while most of the public says, yes, I love the festival because it has music, it has food, it has art and, and great stuff for kids and families to do. Um, uh, that is true in general, but, but uh, our staff and committees spend 14 months preparing every year for things to be new. So in a big picture thing of why to come, why is this special? 10 new food vendors, about six uh, new art installations. Mm -hmm. uh, half of the visual artists who are displaying and selling their work are, are new. That's amazing. Uh, we have some great stuff for kids to do that are some first time activities for kids that are all free. Uh, we've got a new look on Game Street where the kids play competition games and, and we've got all new facades that are going up for that and, and so some new color and energy. We've got transportation to help those that uh, have some mobility issues or just need some help on a day getting in and around the park. Uh, Presbyterian Manor is offering some golf cart rides that go the perimeter of the park and drop off at the key areas. Mm -hmm. uh, we have mobility scooters for rent this year uh, on top of OCCK and, and Striton Energy providing shuttle services in and out of the park from the event center parking lot. So so it's easy to get here and and uh, it and once you get here the party's on. Yep, absolutely. I can talk about that from personal experience. So, <laughs> um, you mentioned some of the new stuff. Things have evolved over the years and this year is no no exception. Uh, we have a couple at least a couple new things going on in in the Artiopolis. Uh, we've yep. got uh, Construction Junction, which we'll talk about a little bit yep. later, and the Dragonfly Scavenger Hunt on Sunday afternoon. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, Sunday is going to be a special day for folks who uh, we've heard over the years that people are festivaled out or they feel like they've done everything that mm -hmm. they wanted to do for mm -hmm. a Sunday. But I'm encouraging the public to do everything they can to save a little bit of energy to uh, come and chill with us on Sunday. Sunday's going to include a, a, a lot of local talent that I think will be fun and a and hundred dragonflies that when you find them, they're all individual works of art that you can, if you pick one up, it's yours and you can oh, take it cool. home. Mm -hmm. Or you can go over to the mural where all 110 are on display and sign your fly uh, on the mural. And uh, we've got some extra prizes and things that we're going to be giving away throughout the weekend too. So. So it is going to be a very different, energetic, and festive experience. And from the, the large number of new musicians who are playing, you may have had your favorites over the years, but there's going to be a fresh mix of music this year. There's going to be some uh, a, a wonderful kind of youthful, whimsical vibe of the art show. There's going to be traditional fine art and great craft, but then there's also some new younger voices that are showing up that uh, I think the public is going to look at that with fresh eyes. Yeah, yeah. 
is a reason to come to the festival every day this year. There is, and and by the way, for some folks who find affordability is an issue, there are programs that the generosity of the Salina public has uh, underwritten the cost of wristbands for those that might need some help getting here. Mm -hmm. And so there's information about the Festival Families First program on our website at riverfestival.com. And there's absolutely no reason for someone not to come. You know, whether you buy on your own a, a four day wristband for $15 in advance or, or wait till the day of and spend $10 at the gate to get in for that day, um, it's really affordable for the quality of entertainment. And then uh, if you are on a budget or, or just wanting to bring your own cuisine and drinks, as long as it's not in a glass container, uh, then you're free to bring your own coolers in and, and uh, uh, a lot of folks take advantage of that. Yeah, so. I, don't, I don't know any festival in the country that has an admission price like the Smoky Hill River Festival. And that you can bring your own stuff in. Right, you know? I right. Mean, a lot, or that you don't have to pay to park, you know. Yes. And, and for, for the folks who've grown up in the Salina area or have made the festival a, a regular trek, when you say what makes it special, um, for, for those 60 new artists who are coming, they may have expectations because some of them might do 10 to 25 shows a year across the country. Mm -hmm. But when they get here, they are shocked about the care that's given, the attention to detail, the hospitality of the crowds, the beauty of the park, the, the, the care that's taken to show respect to them and, and to engage them. And we do that at every level for people coming across every one of the five bridges into the park to once they get here. And, 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 and that, that uh, there's plenty of room to spread out, to find a favorite place, to gather with family or friends or, or a group and, or a reunion or, or you know, mm -hmm. many other th things that, that happen. That, that sense of community that happens here is really a beautiful thing. Yeah. And, and not only are we celebrating the arts, but we're celebrating the best that humanity has to offer. Right, yeah, I mean, not only do you have an impact on the community in the in the from June eighth through eleventh this year, but you, it really carries over to the whole year, doesn't it? It, it really does. I mean, we we have one hundred and twenty or so committee members who work multiple months over the year in in planning and advanced work. Over the course of the weekend, we have 2,000 volunteer slots from the race that's on Saturday morning. Salina Regional you know, puts about 120 volunteers there, and then they put another 120 volunteers in Ardeopolis. Uh, we need 120 or so roughly at the gates, or 140 at the gates mm -hmm. over the, the four days. Uh, ambassadors you know, have 80 to 100 slots, I think, of, of serving tea and water to, uh, to and coffee to, to the exhibiting artists. Uh, we even have a parking committee to help the artists oh, wow. when they arrive on grounds <laughs> to get in the right place. Right. And, and, and so you put all that together and it takes a community. And, and when I talk to people all over the country about this festival or fair, they get excited because they have a hundred volunteers or we have 200 volunteers and then I'll mention well we we utilize 2,000 right. go, what <laughs> how do you do that right. and and so the community is outpouring a support financially and with their employees time the professional services and and then and then having them on top of all of that take the time to volunteer for a few hours or multiple days it makes it all a success yep absolutely uh, I know I'm going to sign up to, to work probably a gate this year, uh, as I did last year, so uh, yep. I'm looking forward to that. Good. Um, Good. As I mentioned, we've both been involved in the River Festival for a long time. I think this yeah. is, what, about a dozen years that you've been actually been in charge this of the is, festival. Yeah, starting my 13th uh, festival, okay. I think. I, I started just before uh, the festival in 11, so. Okay, yeah. all right. After all this time, what makes you excited about the River Festival every year? You know, um, and, and you probably expect the art guy to mention some kind of art, <laughs> uh, but, but really what, what brings me the greatest joy is after the gates open and we're a day or day and a half in, on Friday night I'll come down at about 8.15 or a few minutes before the, the closing band on Friday night goes, mm -hmm. and I walk from about where we're standing up the middle aisle uh, going back 
not to see what's happening, getting set for the stage behind me, but to see the joy and the happiness and the conversation and the comfort and, and the, the relaxing groups of people. And mm -hmm. just being able to see people getting along and, and laughing and enjoying time together and having the, the rest of the cares of the world kind of go away. That's when it. That's what I look forward to the most. Okay. Yeah. So. And and that happens year after year after year. It does. It does. And and each one has its own special memories. You know, we have yeah. uh, we have strange things that happen. And and when you get uh, over the course of the four days, if we have sixty thousand people in the park, uh, it never amazes. It ceases to amaze me. The creative ways people decide to engage with space. Right, <laughs> right, know, right, right, yeah, yeah. So, so we're, uh, uh, to borrow, uh, you know, we're duck diving, dodging, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, and adapting as we need to, depending on weather and depending on the dynamics of the crowd or technical things that we hadn't anticipated. But, but we try to keep those on the down low and just, just forge ahead. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. June 8th through 11th is the, are the days that, of the River Festival this year, uh, right here in Oakdale Park. Yep. Every uh, bit of information about the River Festival is at riverfestival.com. Yep. And if, w whether you want to buy wristbands, whether you want to learn about the bands that are coming, see the information about every artist and the exhibitors and the installation artists, everything and to volunteer is all at riverfestival.com. And admission is only fifteen dollars for all four days if yep. you buy it in, in advance. Yeah, up uh, until the close of okay. business, June sixth. Right. So you go early because some of our vendors run out of money or run out of wristbands uh, a, a day before, and we don't have a chance with forty locations to get them restocked. Right. So yeah, all over town they're yes, for sale. Even they are. even in the general region, they're twenty for sale. cities in the region. Okay. Yep. And um, uh, you can also buy a ten dollar day pass yep. right at the gate. At the gates. Those aren't available in advance, but at any one of the gates on any day, you can pay $10 and get a special colored wristband for that day. Okay. Well, we're certainly looking forward to seeing you at the River yeah. Festival. If you, see, if you see Brad, stop and say hi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this will be a much noisier place, as you said it at the beginning. Be. It, it, uh, it It's a great way to kick off the summer. Okay. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to it. Brad, thanks for your time. I really Thank appreciate you, it. Thank you, and when we come back, we're going to get into the details of the festival, so stay tuned. Welcome back. We're here with Crystal Hammerschmidt, who's the Visual Arts Coordinator. Hey, Crystal, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. This is your first year of the River Festival, right? On the inside, yes. Right. I kind of grew up around the area, okay. so it's exciting to be here. Um, so you're in charge of all the art that's yeah. around the festival. All the visual so, arts. So uh, how many exhibitors are we going to have this year? So we have over 130 exhibiting. We have over 130 exhibiting artists um, in the festival this year, and we have. 64 new artists wow. so debuting this year so maybe they're not necessarily new to the market but mm -hmm. um, new to our festival this year all right so, all right yeah and it runs the gamut from oh absolutely abstract art to traditional art to yeah, anything in between a lot of really great stuff um, I, I'm excited about some of the artists actually wearing some earrings from one of our new right. uh, artists this year cool. Um, cool. so I'm excited to see her back here yeah. okay all right and you're free to, to look at all the art, but you can buy it too. Absolutely. So we have those artists, um, of course, in the east and west side, you have the exhibiting artists who are showing their work and stuff for sale. But then as Stein Stage is behind us, just kind of past the way, we have the art demo section where yes. the artists are going to be showing their trade and what they're doing, which is really cool to see that process. Right. And we'll have seven artists there. And we have three new folks as demonstration artists this year. Um, so we have some woodworking, some glass working, ceramic, uh, leather work. So lots of new fun things to see this year. All right. So we have uh, probably straight back from where the camera is. Yeah. We'll have a bunch of artists there. And yeah. we'll have a bunch of artists over. Yeah, they're going to be everywhere. So we've got our, our demo section back here under that covered pavilion. Mm -hmm. um, over by the sound garden, we're going to have under the other pavilion, there is a Fort Hayes student group 
who will be doing community weaving. So oh, people can actually okay. show up, sit down, and it might be a nice shaded spot to relax, get their hands on, no weaving experience is necessary. Those students will be there to facilitate. Um, and of course, that'll kind of move you over into the west side and everything there. We've got art installations throughout the park. We have over 20 art installations. And if people haven't been to the festival before, you know, we have art on all the bridges coming in. This right. year, Mike Miller's over by the TPAC bridge. If you're coming in, he's got some great interactive stuff on the bridge and mm -hmm. some new parts to play with. And as you come off of that bridge into the park, Kirk Krob's gonna be in the water. Um, we've got some gators down there, so look for those ferocious creatures. And then local sculptor Rich Bergen, he's going to be doing this big piece over on Mulberry Bridge that's sure to catch the eye over there. So look for those new installations okay. as you're coming in. Okay. Well, I guess art is unavoidable once you enter the park here. Absolutely. So, um, there's a new event on Sunday, the Dragonfly Scavenger Hunt. Yeah, that's right. So we have, we have an artist, Evan Brown, who he's, he's a Kansas City based artist and we had um, over a hundred dragonflies fabricated. So these little metal dragonflies about the size. Mm -hmm. um, he's hand painting all of them individually. So they've got a really beautiful festival vibe and color. As a sneak peek, we're gonna hide 10 on Friday and 10 on Saturday, just to kind of get a, get a little test out there. And then on Sunday, we'll have a hundred of those dragonflies hidden throughout the oh, park. Wow. Um, folks can find them. And once you find them, um, they're, Therefore, you're keeping. We just it's it's a way to be able to get a piece of artwork and kind of engage you in the space. And then we'll have a poster that's going to be along the tennis court fence. So when you find that dragonfly, you can go over, try to see if you can find your dragonfly on on the big banner and sign that and um, share it with your friends. Share it on social media. So okay. cool right. activity for Sunday, kind of a chill day. Yeah, yeah. It's another reason to to be here on a Sunday Absolutely. afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else we need to know about the art at the festival this year? I can't think of anything, but there's a lot of new folks coming this year. So come and celebrate with us and, you know, find your purchases. Um, there's a lot of great things to be had. Yeah. So. I always look forward to walking through, seeing all the art and, and a lot of all the, all the creativity yeah. that's out there. So. Absolutely. All right. Well, Crystal, thanks very much. Appreciate your time. Yeah. And we'll be right back. Welcome back. We're here with Susan Eberwine, the Program Assistant for Arts and Humanities. Susan, welcome. Thank you, David. I'm glad to be here. And the uh, children's activities are what we're going to talk about here today. And there are so many of them, I have to refer to my notes because I can't memorize all of them. Right. <laughs> so, well, um, yeah. It, that being said, it really, Artiopolis is a festival within the festival. It is the funnest area in the festival, hands down. Nobody can take me on on that. Uh, so we have Creation Crossing, which is the big white tent where all of the crafts are. Mm -hmm. And the children get to make and take free crafts from the area. Then you can move right on over to Paint Chew Plaza where you can get your face painted. And then on Friday and Saturday, we'll also have the temporary spray tattoos this year. Then you can mosey down to Lego Lane and build and build and build. We have so <laughs> many Legos. Okay. Uh, zag over to Game Street and see our new Game Street facades and our games. They're all free. Just challenge your family and friends to a game of baseball or golf or uh, football. Uh, we also have the Artie stage. And so we have the best entertainers, hands down, for sure. There's no arguing there either. They are there to entertain the children and the young at heart. All day, every day, they're open. And that's always lots of fun. It is, it is. And then new this year, David, I'm so excited about our construction junction area, and it will be a build area and it's gonna be children led. There will be some adults there to supervise a little bit, mm -hmm. but the rules will be made by the children and they will get to build whatever they want with the materials that will be there available to their 
heart's desire and do whatever they want. And I can't wait to see what they come up with. So there'll be a big, huge, finished yeah. something there. <laughs> all kinds Sunday of afternoon. little somethings everywhere, I'm sure. We'll have all a mix of big and little and everything in between. Mm, okay. Well, that'll be interesting to see on Sunday afternoon what they come up with. It will. And then the only other thing I want to be sure and mention as part of um, Artiopolis is our First Treasures program. Sure, yeah. And that is only on Saturdays, and that's for children but that's where the visiting artists that are in the fine art and craft show have donated art pieces. And then the littles get to go in and make their own selection. They'll have a buddy assigned to them to go in. Parents and grandparents are not allowed in. Mm -hmm. The littles get to do their own shopping and they'll be able to make purchases from $5 and under within the tent of the art pieces that have been donated by the visiting artists in the art show. It's always interesting to see what they come up with because uh, all the years my son participated, uh, there were some pretty wild things that he ended up with, uh, which, is, which is cool. <laughs> yeah, there will be quite a variety and the visiting artists this year have been very generous again with us to help support this program where littles can start their own art collection. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, I can't see how any kid would be bored at the River Festival. No. No, they shouldn't be. All right. Well, it's a family event. Bring your kids. Doesn't matter how old. Yes. I've seen months old babies here. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And we do have a baby station um, since you mentioned mm -hmm. that. So if you need to slip in and get out of the sun and have a cool spot or just need to change a diaper, we have an area just for you for that also. All right. Well, you've thought of everything. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. Well, Susan, thanks very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Welcome back. We're here with Amanda Morris, who's the Office Administrator for Arts and Humanities. Amanda, welcome. Thanks. Uh, we're here to talk about food in this segment. Everybody's favorite. <laughs> Absolutely. So, food is my favorite, for sure. <laughs> let's get right into the details. How many vendors do we have coming this year? So um, this year we have 36 vendors. Ten of those are new. Wow. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of new foods to try, um, lots of fun things like moink balls, which are like meatballs wrapped in bacon with some fancy sauce on them. Hmm. Those I'm interested to see. That'll be at Mook's Foods. Um, so that'll be really good. We've got uh, an entire trailer that does um, uh, strictly cotton candy, uh, cotton candy cake. It's uh, what we believe to be a cake shaped cotton candy. Um, hmm. We don't think it's actual cake with cotton candy, but we'll be surprised. Right. Um, and so that's uh, some of the good stuff. We've got some of our regulars coming back to, uh, you know, we have uh, corn dogs and um, barbecue and pizza and all that fun stuff. Uh, it'll be it'll be really exciting and really fun. Great, great. Yeah, I always like the fresh made ice cream. The oh yes. Root beer. Absolutely. You pour those. the root beer over the ice cream. <laughs> right. Make your own float. Uh, we actually also have, um, in addition to our homemade ice cream and our root beer trailer, we'll have a um, an a strictly ice cream trailer that'll have um, shakes and malts and doing some different stuff uh, like that as well. So that'll be fun. Okay. Cool. Um, you mentioned moink balls, mm -hmm. which I've never heard of before, but <laughs> Me is, neither. <laughs> is there anything else that's unusual or surprising this year? Um, there's going to be, you know, um, surprises around every, t every corner, I think, but um, we're going to have fried lasagna sandwich, which will be really yeah. good. Okay. Um, we'll, uh, we'll have Phillies this year, um, Philly sandwiches, any kind of Philly sandwich you can think of. Mm -hmm. um, that'll it's be at Fargo Philly, so that'll be really good. Um, and so I think, I think it'll be a nice mix of, of old and new. Okay. All right. Yeah. It, it's amazing at noon <laughs> that the, the, the road where all the vendors are just full, <laughs> yeah. you yes. know, it's, it's hard to get, hard to get, hard to, hard to tell where the lines are for each, but that's, that's Something. good because a good that problem means, to have, yeah, for sure. it's, it's, it's all popular. Definitely. So, Definitely. Um, and we should mention that there's items that are a little more affordable. For, uh, in yeah, each. Uh, we ask that um, vendors have a food item that's under four dollars so we can um, kind of be able to fit everybody's budgets and things. Um, and so those are marked uh, in the program. Those items are marked in the program. They're also uh, marked on our website, 
riverfestival.com. All of the food vendors and all of their menus are, are there and available now. So you can start planning your planning your meals out. Yeah. <laughs> Like I said, it's so full there. It's, uh, <laughs> it's good to have a plan of action yeah. before you get out there. But, but uh, uh, all the smells are wonderful. Absolutely. All the tastes are wonderful. So it's hard to go wrong. Definitely, definitely. You'll, 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 uh, you'll find something that you love for sure. Okay. Well, Amanda, thanks very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Welcome back. We're here with Sarah Keck, uh, the Arts Education Coordinator. Sarah, welcome. Thank you for having me. And you're talking about music. Yes. All right. Because we can't <laughs> wait to hear who's going to be here at the festival this it's year. It's going to be great. Yes. So uh, let's start chronologically. Thursday night mm -hmm. is the Festival Jam. What, what is the Festival Jam? So the Festival Jam is the event that kicks off the festival. Uh, it's going to happen on Thursday, June 8th, and is sponsored by SM Hansen Music. The gates open at 4 p.m. where people can start coming into the park, visiting food vendors, and then finding their spot in front of Eric Stein stage. Mm -hmm. And then at 6 p.m., we've got 16 bands that feature local and regional performers that are going to be taking the stage. The audience is going to get to hear a wide variety of music in a short amount of time because those groups are going to be changing in 15 minute increments. Wow. Yes, it's going to happen <laughs> quick. That lineup was recently announced and people can check that out on social media mm -hmm. or on the River Festival website. Uh, but the Festival Jam is an exciting, fast paced show that features performers that you're only going to be able to see on Thursday night. Yeah, 12 minutes of music, three minutes of change. Exactly, yes. It's, it's amazing it's how, how, they, how they accomplish <laughs> that. Okay. Well, uh, that's Thursday night. Mm -hmm. Then we have Friday through Sunday yes. with a whole bunch of artists. Mm -hmm. We do. So this year, the lineup actually features the largest number of new performers to the stages in recent years. The audience is going to get to hear anything from country and indie folk to jazz and funk or rock or innovative fusion groups. So the music starts at 11, and we're going to see local, regional, and national performers on the stages. Um, taking a look at the children's stage, or arty stage as we love to call it, um, we're going to have a lot of fun interactive acts that include Drum Safari, Duke Otherwise, or the Latin Grammy winning duo uh, Uno Dos Tres Andres. And then if we take a look at the main stages, each night is going to feature its own vibe. On Friday, we started off with Aidina's Night, and that's going to be with the help of Paramount. And then on Saturday, folks are going to get to hear a wide variety of rock music that culminates in a performance by the alt-rock group Welshly Arms. And then on Sunday, we're excited because we're featuring over 10 uh, performing groups that have local connections, whether maybe they grew up here or they reside in the Salina community area. Um, and that's just going to be on Sunday um, with the closing act being Howard Mahan and Friends. But I could talk all day about yeah. the amazing groups that are going to be here. But I think the best way to get to know them and get familiar with some of the sounds that you're going to hear throughout the weekend by visiting the entertainment tab on the River Festival website mm -hmm. or checking out our Spotify playlist, yes. which is titled the 2023 uh, Smoky Hill River Festival. It's going to be easy for you to find. Yeah, I've, I've checked that out already. Oh, yeah. It's got <laughs> at least a couple dozen songs on it, if not more. Yes, so definitely. So a real, real good mm -hmm. way to sample all the bands that, exactly. that are going to be be appearing here. Um, so not only do we have artists on the various stages, mm -hmm. we have a lot of roving artists too, right? Yes, we're going to have several this year. Um, a roving artist is someone that you're going to see while you're waiting in the food line, um, while you're walking across the park or other spontaneous locations. Uh, we're excited to have a 2022 fan favorite named Clan Tinker returning to the festival. Um, they are a family of vaudeville style circus performers. And then we're also going to have stilt walking storytellers. Uh, we're going to have roving musicians and we're going to have um, a couple of surprises that we're excited to share throughout the weekend. So, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, now, it, it takes quite a long time to plan out the festival. It does. With all the yes. various things going on. Um, this is actually your first full year, right? Yes, I'm very excited. Yeah. Um, so how do you go about choosing all of these bands? So it takes a team, and we do that through the entertainment committee. And that committee begins meeting as early as July. 
and then uh, we start beginning that programming season for the next festival. Um, that entertainment committee starts looking at evaluations for groups that um, they come in in a variety of ways. It could be the entertainment application, it could be suggestions from the entertainment committee themselves, or community members can actually provide nominations. You go on our website, contact us, and we've received several this year uh, with ideas of groups that people would love to see at the festival. Okay. So if you know of a band who, uh, <laughs> who wants to participate or you think would be good for the festival, um, make sure you get that into Arts and Humanities by yes. maybe August or September, I guess. Yes, definitely, because we start early. So. All right, okay. <laughs> um, I think I've gone through all the questions I have. Is there anything else we need to know about music this year? I think it's going to be a very diverse, eclectic group of performers, and there's going to be a little something for everyone. And what's nice is, yes, we do have a lot of brand new performers that are coming in, but you're going to get to hear uh, both familiar and brand new sounds across the park. So there's going to be something new for everyone and something uh, that might bring up some old memories whenever you're coming through and just listening to some songs as you're visiting with family, friends, or just enjoying sitting in the park. I always look forward to Saturday at 2 p.m. with the Blades. Yes, absolutely. They've, they've had the same <laughs> time slot for decades now, I think. So. Yes, they're back there again this year. All right. <laughs> well, we'll look forward to all the musical acts this year. Sarah, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thank you so it. much for having me. And we'll be right back. Welcome back. We're here with Anna Pauscher Morowitz, who's the Operations and Development Manager. Anna, welcome. Hi, Dave. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Uh, we're here to talk about volunteers in this segment. Yeah. And um, it doesn't take just the six of you to run the yeah. festival. Yeah, so we have a small staff um, that work on the festival year round. We have other things that we work on too, but the festival is something that we're touching all year long. It takes about 14 months to plan each festival. Um, but volunteers are a huge part of what makes the festival run. Um, we use about 2,000 volunteers uh, throughout the whole festival, and that includes you know, some of the community groups that coordinate their own volunteers, like mm -hmm. the AMBUCs, um, take care of our trash, 4-H groups, uh, also help. You know, There's all sorts of different jobs, but then the festival itself coordinates a lot of those volunteers also. Okay. How many volunteers does it take in total to run the festival? 2,000 volunteers. Ooh, wow. Um, and so, yeah, uh, we get people from all walks of life. You have to be at least 12 years old to volunteer. Uh, if you're younger than that, uh, bring, you know, you can volunteer with your family. Right. Um, we encourage groups to volunteer together. And so, um, you know, it doesn't, it's a very social experience. And so our volunteers are working, you know, sometimes with their, in a corporate group, uh, with a business or a company, mm -hmm. sometimes families volunteer together or families or friends. Um, we really encourage that. Also, if you are interested in volunteering as a business, um, you're welcome to wear your t-shirts so you can all represent whatever organization that you're a part of. Um, and that kind of helps shape that volunteer experience and gets you some more exposure to, in the community during the festival. Now, what kinds of duties do volunteers have? I imagine with 2,000, it's quite a bit, yeah. quite, a, quite a range. Yeah, so there's, you know, you can help uh, in the office. We have office volunteers that help make name tags or laminate things. Um, or full t-shirts. We also- That's great because you're in the air conditioning. Yeah, yep. and it's, you know, <laughs> we, we use that type of help year round. Sure. Um, a little bit more in the spring as we're getting ready for, for the event. Um, we have, speaking of air conditioning, we have hospitality volunteers that help with kind of general operations, answering phones, connecting people to the right people. Mm -hmm. um, and then a lot of our work is outdoors. So in our job, or our volunteer job descriptions on the website, um, we list out uh, the opportunities and the requirements for those opportunities. So if it's an outdoor job, we'll say so. Um, but those include things like helping in the kids area in Artiopolis, mm -hmm. helping with the crafts or the button machines, or um, in Ambassadors, our volunteers are a huge part of why our artists are so happy with our show and why they keep coming back. And so these Ambassador volunteers hand out coffee and water and tea um, and really just help the artists feel comfortable while they're, they're sitting outside for three and a half days selling their work. Right, right. Yeah, I handed out programs at the 
River Festival last year. Yeah, at and the it gate. was a great way to see people I knew yep. and see people I didn't know, and, uh, yeah. and it was just a, a nice time. A lot of people love the gates um, because you, you, you're that first point of contact, mm -hmm. so you get to see the people when they're super excited to be walking into the park. Um, but yeah, you like if you're from Salina or you're really connected in Salina, you can continue to make those connections and see those people that you haven't seen in forever. Right, right. Okay, so if you're interested, you can sign up to be a volunteer. How do you do that? On our website, um, if you go to participate and volunteer, uh, there's a couple different links to the online sign up. Um, so, and there you can see all the opportunities, it sorts it out and gives you all of the descriptions. So if you're not sure where you want to go, that's really the best place to, to figure it out. You can see where we need the most help also. Or, or if there's something particular that you wanna do, you know, sign up for that. Also, if, if you don't have access to a computer easily, you're welcome to give us a call. Um, and Dave, I imagine you may be able to put the number right there. <laughs> on the screen for, for you. Um, so give us a call and we'll help connect you to the right opportunity. Okay. I think we should also mention that there are a number of committees uh, yes. that, that work all year round. I was hoping you'd ask. <laughs> so um, our committee members do help all year round. There's a lot of different types of committees, the entertainment committee, the food committee, the arts ambassadors committee, or the supervisors for the people that take out the coffee and water and tea. Um, the art shows have committees, hospitality committees. So that is all listed on our website too. You have to click in a little bit further to get to that list, but that is um, a way, if you're really committed to the festival, you really love the festival, and you have ideas about how maybe we could make things better the committee volunteer opportunities are is really where it's at also our committee members because they dedicate time throughout the whole year um, they get special perks like this hat we call our committee volunteers festival aces and so um, as a thank you you get you get special swag we do a committee dinner um, for our committee volunteers uh, that's a lot of fun and a great way to just we reminisce and we get excited for the festival and so um, and there's there's other ways to get connected to every committee works a little bit differently but it's if you love the festival and you want to connect a little bit deeper committee work is where to go okay all right well no shortage of, of opportunities to volunteer at the at the river festival both on the the dates of the festival and year-round yeah uh, anything else we need to know about volunteers at the festival it's a lot of fun we have so much fun it's a great way to connect with people you also get to see behind the scenes mm -hmm. uh, and how the festival works so if you're a person you, you consider yourself a festival person take it a step further and like really get into it and see how it happens also a great way to give back to the community and a lot of the shifts are only about two hours long, so yeah. it's not like you're doing it all day or missing time with exactly. your family. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Volunteer for two hours, and then you can go chill, you know, listen to music, get some food, buy some art. So, yeah, it's just a little part of the day. All right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, if you're interested in volunteering, go to the River Festival website, riverfestival.com, and look for the volunteer link. Yep, participate, and... then volunteer, or give us a call. Okay. Well, Anna, thanks very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. And that wraps up our uh, River Festival preview show. So get out to the festival and uh, enjoy yourself. See you there. <laughs>